The other thing that the patch will do is, uh, as I said, provide some index hints, again, to make sure that the queries are processing the way they should. There's also a new profile option for dynamic sampling, which is really applicable to those running on the 10G version of the Oracle database. We'll talk about this a little bit later. In addition, there's some improvements for those of you who may use the bulk import for priceless. While again, this is not a direct how I process an order to improve that performance, but for those who use the priceless bulk import, there's some performance enhancement there as well. There are some additional notes and ways to find pricing improvement information within support. Uh, some Just some general queries that you can do. If you put in performance and then within quotes, Oracle Advanced Pricing or Oracle Order Management or Oracle Configurator, you will get on the very first page of what's returned by support a very quick list of the types of things you need to look at. One of the things that's been around with pricing since the days of uh, 11i, the very first introduction of advanced pricing, was a process called QP Maintain the Denormalized Data. This is a function that's available to run and is recommended to run by Oracle on a normal process that's often been a source of mystery to what it does. So in case you're interested in what this function actually does and why it needs to be run, you can take a look at this note. Many of you know that often the case happens when you add new qualifying conditions to a priceless or a modifier, that sometimes don't, those conditions don't appear to take effect. And the normal course of action is to run this concurrent program. Well, again, if you want to understand why it's necessary to run and what it actually does, this is a note that will explain that for you. There is a new piece of functionality available, note 553399.1 describes it, that allows you to do a shortcut if you have a significant number of items that carry a zero dollar price. So essentially what you do is a profile option is provided that you set and then you provide some logic to the application so that any order line that is going to return a zero price for the item will process much more efficiently. Uh, one condition that needs to be considered though is that any modifiers that do either any kind of quantity grouping or amount grouping, lines that have been included in this functionality will be ignored. There's more details about that provided in the note, but it's worth recognizing here. So what's actually provided is a PL SQL function that just exits, it doesn't do anything, that you need to provide the logic that will in essence tell the pricing engine price this line at zero and then do nothing else. So you provide the conditions and it can be any logic that you can put in a normal PL SQL function. And what happens is if the particular line and item are to be priced at zero, you return the zero price, you tell it what prices to put on the line, and then the application will set the calculate price flag to no, which means no further actions will take place on that line from a repricing standpoint. And furthermore, that will end the pricing call for that particular line. So rather than going through all the other attribute mapping, all the other modifiers, etc., if you provide this function and the return is actually zero, that's the end of the pricing call for this particular line. Zero dollar pricing is very common in configure to order and pick to order environments where you have option classes and choices that may be priced at zero. Uh, and again, if you have a large number of zero price items, this may be a way to provide some improved benefit. There is a white paper that's associated with this note that actually gives some very detailed and specific examples of how this function works and I would strongly encourage you to take a look at that. Note 948900.1 talks about pattern search logic. So if you recall with advanced pricing you can define a virtually unlimited number of additional pricing and qualifying attributes. And those qualifying attributes can be attached to qualifiers against a price list or a modifier or a modifier line in any combination of and or conditions. You can associate the pricing attributes of the list lines to further identify and filter how those are applied. What this new functionality does is gives the application a way to analyze those patterns in advance and try to take advantage of the patterns that are there when it's determining what lines and what lists can be used as part of a pricing call. Uh, with 11.5.10, 12.0, and 12.1, there are patches that are available. Uh, if you're on 12.1, you need to issue a server's request to actually get the patch. Uh, version 12.2 includes the functionality. In all of the notes about this patch, it's recommended that before you apply it in a patch sense, 
that you log a service request with Oracle and they will help you determine the applicability. So as noted what happens is this new function provides some improved search efficiency. In a nutshell and the rule of thumb if, if you have a large number of attributes that you define and you have some relatively complicated and or conditions that you use for qualifiers then this patch may apl be applicable for you. A new profile option is provided gives you control over number one whether or not the pattern search is used and if you do use it is it applied to modifiers or price lists and there's also a concurrent program that's that's supplied and this is the program that actually pre-stages the patterns in such a way that the new search engine can take advantage of. Some other new functionality uh, and this applies specifically to those running on the 10G version of the database which is many of the customers now there's a feature within the Oracle database introduced in 9G called dynamic sampling which is an additional aid to the query parser to help it find the best path through the database to execute a specific query. In release 9i the default definition for the dynamic sampling level was 1. Those who upgraded from 9G, I'm sorry, 9i to 10G, uh, the default was reset to 2 or some value other than 1 and that was determined to be a cause of some significant performance issues especially with pricing. So what this new piece of functionality does is provide a profile option uh, that can make sure that that level is set to 1 and it's recommended that, that this be made available and that the value be in fact set to 1.